folk are rich and powerful, the rich and powerful. Because black folk work for 300 and 10 years as chattel slaves and got not one day's pay. I could call out the rich and the powerful whose riches have been gotten on our backs, but I'll save that for another time. <laughs> Mr. Louis Farrakhan is a U.S. religious leader and also the head of the Nation of Islam. There is a video of him trending which he's spitting some facts about the privileges of some Western countries. I want us to watch this video. I will be back. White folk are rich and powerful, the rich and powerful. Because black folk work for 300 and 10 years as chattel slaves and got not one day's pay. I could call out the rich and the powerful whose riches have been gotten on our backs. But I'll save that for another time. <laughs> the point is, mm -hmm. the present generation of whites did not do this. But the present generation of whites are in their privileged position because of what a former generation of whites have done. Now the question is, a black agenda should be put before them because if they don't accept the responsibility to clean up this problem, you don't have a lot of time to wait 40 more years for a benevolent white president or a benevolent black president. That day is over. America is facing the judgment of God as we sit around this table. Look at the weather. Look at the world turning down on her. America is bankrupt. Thirteen trillion dollars in debt. And if you figure Medicare and Medicaid, she's over sixty trillion dollars in debt. She can never pay it. That's why she voted for $650 billion in armament, because she can't pay the debt. But she can bully those whom she is in debt to with fear over her military prowess. I'm here to tell you she's losing there too. Now I close. Our people need repair. Yes. We need repair from 310 years of chattel slavery where black men were forced to be studs to make black women pregnant to make more slaves for the slave master. And that same unhealthy attitude of misusing our women and making babies that we have no desire to take care of is still with us. <laughs> Willie Lynch, who gave the ways that we could keep being divided so that they could rule us for a thousand years, that sickness is still with us. Yes, we got a black president, but brother said it was confusion. He confused the issue. But really, he never wants to lose the white vote. So if he loses the white vote, he don't care that you voted for him. But if he loses the white vote, he feels he will lose. Dear brother, if you're watching, Out of love. Out of love. There it is. That's right. You won't lose the white vote of those whites that really understand this problem and know that this problem needs to be solved and we can't keep 
relegating it to generation after generation because a few of us got a little money, a few of us got positions, a few of us have wealth while the masses of our people are going steadily down. No one man can rise above the condition of his people. Amen. So President Obama, this august body of brothers and sisters that really love you want you to use your bully pulpit but then after you do that then what about us mm -hmm. see brother said responsibility is it is it that we should let them take responsibility to do for us or should we pool the knowledge that's at the table, the power that's in our community, the wealth that's in our community to change the harsh reality of black life in America. Mm -hmm. He can create an atmosphere, that's what it is. but we have to do the job of fulfilling the black agenda. Thank you very much. Yes, that was Mr. Louis Farrakhan. This message was directly for the black Americans, but I shared it here on this platform because we have a lot in common. The challenges African Americans face in the US is not that much different than what we normally face here in Africa. Now, let me do the comparison for you to know and understand where I'm coming from. Somewhere last year, I shared a content of one of the Pan-Africanists in Ghana, who is called Mr. Kwesi Pratt, and he made mention of something that is still resonates with me since I listened to that speech. He said, many uh, Western countries are believed to be has said that Africans cannot use slavery as an excuse for our underdevelopment. And he made mention that if really we can't use excuse, then how are we going to go forward because unless the Western countries or the colonial masters who came to Africa can also help us to enslave some of their country for us to go and pick some of them to come and work for us for free for 400 years. You get it? That's, that, 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 that's why I'm saying that the problems African Americans are facing is not... Is not there is not that difference than what Africans are facing. I've seen a lot of Africans saying that, okay, now we can't use slavery as excuse because they left this continent long time ago, so why are we not developing? And I asked myself, yes, you understand the legacy, the colonial legacy. Someone comes to your house, enslaved you, tried to brainwash you for more than 300 years. He, he imposed his, his culture on you. He imposed his educational systems on you. He imposed his political systems on you. And you think you can just make it easy like that majority of africans look down upon their own culture majority of africans don't even have identity it's not going to be easy because you were brainwashed you, we have been brainwashed for years it's just recently people are getting wake up most africans are waking up to the reality those Western countries, the privileges they are having today is the impact that was created by, by their forefathers. 
the slavery, the stealing of resources from other continents is what is making those countries what it is today. So if they are feeling the impact of what their ancestors did few centuries ago or centuries ago, why, why, why don't you think that negative effect that were also imposed on you is the one affecting us today? They are getting the positive effects because they have been able to build generational wealth. They have been able to build generational wealth. But to us, we are feeling the negative effect of whatever that was happening to us some time ago or centuries ago. That is the reality. So when I see people, we can't uh, use slavery as excuse. Yes, we can use it as excuse because your leader is also a victim of colonial legacy. Your leader, who you want us to blame, because ask yourself, for years, most Africans has not experienced a great leader because most of the leaders are also victims of colonial legacy. They have been brainwashed. They are being threatened. And if you, you, you don't know and you try doing the right thing in Africa, you are being removed through coup or assassination. And as we always say, these things happens. And if you don't know, it happens to some great leaders like Thomas Sankara or Patrice Lumumba, Kwame Nkrumah. Yes, Kwame Nkrumah was dethroned by the sponsorship of CIA. So we shouldn't be thinking that everything Every problem we are facing today is because of our leaders. It's the impact or the negative impact of what was pushed on us centuries ago. Colonialism has had a huge impact on Africa when it comes to brainwashing, indoctrination through education religion, and other aspects of the white man supremacy. We won't talk much, but we will make sure we liberate our people and those who have ears should listen. Please, you can go to my description box and click on the Telegram link. It will take you to my Telegram platform. You can join us as we discuss about the well-being of Africa. If today is also your first time joining us, then don't forget to subscribe to this channel and turn on the notification button so that anytime I upload any great content, you will be notified. Thanks for watching.